Okay, the third question says, okay, it's August, on August 2nd, 2010, the price of the bond was quoted at 110%, okay, of its principal value. We'll find out what this means in a second. And what we're being asked to do is to find what is the yield to maturity for the bond? What is the rate that the market wants? How can, how can we find that rate? We first have to find out how the bond is priced, because remember from our previous conversation, okay, let me remind you, Okay, the bond is going to be priced above, okay, um, at a premium, right? Above its its principal value. If the yield to maturity is what? If the yield to maturity is less than the coupon rate. In other words, if the bond is paying a higher rate than what the market wants. Here, it's telling us that the bond is paying. It's priced at 110 percent, so it's it's priced at a premium. So that means that somehow this this bond's coupon rate is higher than what the market wants at this point, right? That's the only way you can be you can sell at a premium. The coupon rate is greater than the yield to maturity of the market. So as we know that the coupon rate is 8.75 percent, we have we suspect an educated guess is that whatever we find is a yield to maturity, it has to be less, and that's why it's being priced at a premium in the market. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and solve this problem okay let's start first of all um, what is the price of the bond the price of the bond is one million one hundred thousand how do we know that we just multiply 110 percent times the one million face value so what is 110 percent of one million it's one million one hundred thousand dollars okay the only trick here is to know well, how many periods are left in the bond's life right what is the number of periods? How much? I know that I'm going to be receiving these payments. I already estimated that I'll be receiving $43,750 every six months. But for how long? Well, as long as the bond exists. How long will the bond exist? If I am in August 2nd, 2010, and remember, this bond pays, makes payments when? Every February 1st and August 1st. So by the time August 2nd is, is you know, today is August 2nd, all of 2010 has been already paid, right? I would have already received the the, um, the February 1st and August 1st payments. So all of 2010 is set. When does this bond mature? This bond matures when? On February 1st, 2017. So how many payments are left? So from 2011 to 2016, there are six years, right? Since I have semi-annual payments, six times two, 12 semi-annual payments are left. Then one more, right? The, the very last one on February 1st, 2017 is also going to be paid. So how many um, semi-annual payments are left uh, between the end of, uh, between August 2nd, 2010 and when the bond matures in February 1st, 2017? They are 13 semi-annual payments. So the number of periods left are 13. When in doubt, use your hands and you'll see that it works too. Okay, but convince yourself that indeed there are 13 semi-annual payments left. So this is a bond. This is an instrument that has 13 semi-annual payments left. Each semi-annual payment is going to be $43,750. Okay, and at the end it's going to give me a $1 million, right? And because of all this, this bond is worth right now, to me, it's worth $1,100,000. Notice that it's a negative because as always, you are receiving these payments. So you, in order to buy a bond, you would have to pay this amount. The market says that right now this is worth a million one hundred. So we don't need to do anything. It's already, uh, it's already given by this by this uh, by question number three. Okay, what we need to do is just simply find out what is the rate. What is the interest rate that the market is asking for? Okay. Remember, the interest rate or the yield to maturity is not the same thing as the coupon rate. The coupon rate is set. The interest rate can vary according to market conditions. So let's first find the rate. And there's a two things. There's two parts to this, right? The, if these are semi-annual payments, and I ask Excel to solve me solve for this problem using the rate function. Okay, remember the rate function in Excel right here. If I do that, be very careful about one thing. What rate is is Excel going to give me? Well, if I'm if the payments are semi-annual, then what rate should I will will Excel generate? It will give me a semi-annual rate. So the answer is going to have to be whatever this Excel gives me times two, because in finance we always express all yields or interest rates in annual terms. Okay, so let's find out. Let's go to FX. Let's say number of periods. How much are left? Thirteen semi-annual periods. Remember, everything is semi-annual. This is why the answer will be a semi-annual rate. So there are 13 semi-annual periods. Where are my payments? Where are my semi-annual payments? They are, here they are. Click on this cell, the $43,750. Okay. 
what is the present value of this bond? What is the price of this bond? The price of this bond is, we already found this, is right here, the cell, D34. And the future value, we know that we're going to receive in the future uh, the $1 million. Okay. Remember, these instruments are instruments that pay you um, the payments, the coupon payments, and pay you at the end the principal. Okay. And in exchange for those payments, you have to pay whatever the bond's price is worth, which in this case is one million one hundred thousand. Given that these this is the conditions that exist, given that this bond is priced at one million one hundred, given that you know that this price is the must be the present value of these two payments, then the question is what is what is the discount rate that we're using in order to value this bond at one million one hundred thousand dollars? So you press OK and you find out that the rate is three point forty one percent. But what is this rate? Is this annual or semi-annual? Given that we were feeding Excel semi-annual semi information, that this must be a semi-annual rate. To make it an annual rate, you would have to do what to it? You would have to take that and multiply it times two. Okay. So the answer to this question is that the market right now wants 6.82%. No wonder that uh, the bond is selling at a premium because the market wants 6.82%. And what is the rate that the, this bond is giving the market? The rate is, remember, 8.75%. So because the instrument is giving more than what the market wants, the price is at a premium. Let's go to number four now. For number four, it says that now assume it's August 2nd, 2011. So it's just one year after the what we did for problem number three, right? So uh, we already know how many periods are left in the uh, life of the bond. If here it was 13 periods, semi-annual periods, one year later, would you 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 know you will have only 11 semi-annual periods, right? So suppose it's August 2nd, 2011, and bonds that are just like this company, okay, are paying are yielding, are offering 5.84%. Okay, So think of it this way. The correct yield to maturity for this bond, for bonds like this, is 5.84%. And what now you're being asked to do is find the price of the bond today. So how much would this company's bond be worth? So here's what you need to do, right? The unknown is going to be what now? The unknown is going to be the price or the PV, remember? The present value. Present value is always the value today of anything that of any instrument, any company that offers payments in the future. But we need to know the rest of the information in order to get, to, to get the PV. What do we need to know in order to get the price or the present value of an instrument? We need to know what we're getting paid. We need to know the number of periods. Okay, and so let's find that out. What is the interest rate as well? Well, that's something that we also need to know to find the present value, right? What is the discount rate or interest rate? Well, what we're told is that the annual rate is 5.84%. But since we know that all these payments are semi-annual and the number of periods are semi-annual, what must we do to that, semi to that rate of 5.84%? We must convert it to a semi-annual rate as well. So we're going to take equal sign, 5.84%, uh, and divide by 2. So now that we have a semi-annual rate, uh, now we can fill in the rest. The number of periods of semi-annual periods that are left in the life of the bond, if we are now August 2nd, 2011, are going to be you know, one year less than the previous problem. So one, 11 periods left. Okay, One year has passed between problem number three and problem number four. So two semi-annual uh, payments have been already made. So now there's only 11 left. The payments, semi-annual payments are 43,750. What is the future value that we'll have at the end of the bond's maturity? Equal to, where is it? What is the future value? It's the face value, right? A million dollars. We knew that as well. It's always, you always get at the end of the bond's life, the face value of the bond. So what is the price of this bond? The price of this bond is just the present value of all payments that we expect to receive from that bond. So we do PV, present value function. Okay, double click. And of X. A uh, question before we solve this: Do you expect this present value to be above or below par? Okay. Is this bond going to be trading at a premium or at a discount? Think of it this way, right? Remember, the yield to maturity that that the bond, that the market wants is five point, the equivalent of five point eighty four percent per year. What does this bond offer? This bond offers eight point seventy five percent. So it's offering more than what the market wants. So this price will probably, will very likely, right? It should be uh, reflecting a premium. Okay, let's find out. What is the rate? Periodic rate, right? The rate every period, which is 2.92%, right? 
because everything is in semi-annual terms. What are the number of semi-annual periods left in the, in the bond's life? 11. What are the payments? The payments are the same as always, 43,750. And what is the future value? A million dollars. So if a bond is going to pay you a million dollars at the end of its life, right? At the end of 11 semi-annual periods. And if the bond is going to pay you $43,750 every six months until the bond matures. And if you know that the interest rate that the market wants is the equivalent of 2.92% every six months, what is this bond worth to you today? Press OK. And you will see that this bond is worth $1,135,000. As you can see, this bond is trading at a premium as we assume they would be. Okay. If you if the if the color coding red bothers you because of what Excel does, then just put a negative sign in front, and that's what it shows. Okay. So if you want to express this price as a percentage of of face value, then that's easy enough. You just do equal sign, divide the price of the bond by its principal value. The principal value is just to go back to the same cell. It's this one, and this bond is trading at 113% of its principal value.